Do you think cryptocurrency is done for? I would love to hear your guys' opinions. Comment down below where you think the future of cryptocurrency is going. As we know, cryptocurrency markets are extremely down at the moment, some by even over 90%. In my opinion, I don't think cryptocurrency is done for. In fact, it doesn't even bother me. I've been playing around investing and trading crypto for the last five years back in 2017. And I must say, regardless of the current Bitcoin and cryptocurrency crash, you still got to remember, Bitcoin is still up about 500% in the last five to six years, which is still an epic return rate, which no banks or financial institutions can offer. In today's video, I'm going to show you how you can go and profit off this crypto winter and make anywhere between $100 and $1,000 a day, depending on how you want to go about this. So I'm going to talk about trading versus investing in crypto and what you should do and how to profit off this tough era in cryptocurrency, how the whales and the big boys place millions and billions of dollars of buy and sell positions in the markets, how to identify those areas and how you can follow their footsteps to become profitable with cryptocurrency. And this is not going to be some upsell to some crazy 997 cryptocurrency course. This is all completely free value on YouTube based on my advice, experience, successes and losses that I've had in the last couple of years of dabbling around in cryptocurrencies. The first thing that I want to touch on, once you understand how the markets move, this applies to cryptocurrency, forex markets, gold markets, indices, all of these markets move in a very similar kind of structure. Once you understand that, no matter what market you're in, whether you're extremely bearish, whether it's a market crash, whether it's extremely bullish, you can become profitable and make money off of those markets, which is exactly what I'm going to break down in today's video, how you can still make money off these diving markets over here and become profitable with cryptocurrencies in 2022, 2023 and beyond. What's going on? Awesome people of YouTube. Jay here from the Millionaire Mindset YouTube channel. On this channel, I've been documenting my journey on how I make money online from trading to investing to e-commerce to drop shipping, drop servicing, affiliate marketing and all sorts of various ways in the last couple of years on YouTube by posting a daily series. In today's video, I wanted to touch on cryptocurrency. I've actually been speaking about this quite a bit on my channel recently. I enjoy the topic. I love hearing everyone else's opinions. And it's absolutely fascinating to me to understand exactly how these markets are moving and how we can actually become profitable off of this over here. The first thing I want to touch on is investing versus trading in the crypto markets. Investing takes a long term approach to the markets and often applies to such purposes such as retired accounts. A very good example. Every single month I buy $100 worth of Ethereum. I don't look at it. I don't touch it. I store it in a wallet. And that is something I will look Look at 10, 20 years later. I can promise you that account is at least down by 50% at the moment, but I'm not bothered because I'm not in that for the short term. So if you are an investor in cryptocurrency, do understand that is a long term game for the next couple of years. That is something you want to hold and not even look at. Secondly is trading, which is a short term strategy to maximize returns daily, monthly or quarterly, which is what we're more going to go in depth in today's video, because that is what we are going to use to make money in this cryptocurrency winter. So if I come over to Bitcoin at the moment, what I would like to see before this market goes bullish and has a another bull run is I would like to see I'm currently on the two hour chart is a break of these highs over here, collecting all of these sellers liquidity, even ultimately better a break of these highs over here collecting some more of the seller's liquidity in order for the market to be forming new highs, tapping into unmitigated demand zones, which are the areas where the big whales and big financial institutions, all your massive cryptocurrency investors bought extremely hard in the market for price to tap into to continue its bullishness. Ultimately, as an investor, we would not want to see a break of these lows because that means more big whales are selling off the cryptocurrencies. Then we can expect price to tap into more supply zones, which are areas where the big whales sold off extremely hard in the markets to continue its bearishness. So those are one of two schematics which we can expect from Bitcoin, but we will never know exactly how price will play out. But in today's video, I'm going to show you how we can follow price along to get more of a confirmation of where price is going to go so that we can follow those footsteps and become profitable off of that. So the first step in understanding how the markets move and how you you can become profitable of cryptocurrency. This requires to identify areas in the market where the big financial institutions and whales of the market have bought and sold hard 
off the market. First thing I will go and do is to identify these areas. If you come over to the daily chart of any cryptocurrency market, this for example, let me just completely remove and clear this chart is Bitcoin at the moment. There are two main zones in a market where you can tell where big whales bought and sold hard off of these markets where price has to fulfill to continue its bearish or bullish movement. Firstly, we have areas where price has sold hard, extremely off of the market. Those areas consist of the last up move before a big down move that completely broke structure and collected liquidity. Take example, this candle over here. This blue candle for some of you may be a green candle was the last up move in this market, the last buy move before the big down move that broke all of the structure and collected all of this buyer's liquidity. So this area in the market is a very large unmitigated area where price hasn't fulfilled where the market sold extremely hard off. So, so when price reaches this area would be an excellent time to look for confirmations for short and sell entries to make profit off of selling crypto. There's a big saying that goes around most millionaires are made in the bear markets. And that is exactly true. I have made tons of money shorting cryptocurrencies, NASDAQ, US 30, all of the bearish markets at the moment, making more money off of those sales than anything. Yesterday's video, which I'll leave in the description down below, was how I made $27,000 in one morning shorting Dow Jones using a very similar kind of strategy. Same thing goes for the areas in the market where the big whales bought extremely hard, which are last down moves before big up moves that completely broke structure. If you take a look at this black candle over here, this was the last down move before a big up move that completely broke structure and collected all of the seller's liquidity, which was back in November and December 2020. So if I drag out this entire box, you will see price had quite an awesome reaction of this demand zone going up by nearly $4,000. That's because this market was filling in a demand zone back from 2020, which then price tapped into another supply zone back from 14th of June, tapping into it to continue its more bearish movement. So over here at this area, we could have caught some excellent buys, making a couple of thousand pips on this move. And over here, we could have looked for sales. Because remember, in this market, you can make just as much as money off of short positions than long positions. First thing you need to go and do is if you want to be profitable at this is to go and mark out all your supply and demand zones, which are your big up moves before down moves that broke structure that hasn't been mitigated. Take a look at this. There are some massive supply zones sitting over here that have not been mitigated. This entire blue candle here counts as a supply zone, which was the last up move before a big down move that broke the structure and collected this liquidity, which has not been mitigated. You will see price has traded out of it and has never fulfilled price. This supply zone over here also counted as the last up move before a big down move where price fulfilled it to continue its movement downwards. So this supply zone has been mitigated, which is a supply zone you would not count in this case. So for now, we can highlight these two areas regarding further down demand zones. This demand zone has now been mitigated so we can come back back to 2020 and go and look for more. Over here, we have another demand zone, which was the last down move. The small little candle over here was the last down move before a big up move that broke structure and collected all the seller's liquidity. So this over here is a valid demand zone where we can go and look for buy positions. As you can see, price is not tapped into this yet. So what we can expect is since a lot of people are buying here, remember big banks, financial institutions are there to make money off of you. They are there to manipulate the markets. So we can expect a break of this liquidity over here, which a lot of people would have placed buy orders, long positions with their stop loss losses below the low. So we can expect price to come and fulfill this to collect all of these stop losses to go and collect all of this money from the buyers. This is where it's important that we understand how price moves, how the markets are manipulated, and how we can go and make money off of that. If I come over to the two hour chart, we can even refine down our supply zones. In this case, my two areas of interest for Bitcoin would be this unmitigated supply zone over here and this big daily demand zone over here either for short positions or for long positions. Secondly, you need to understand that you can't just go and trade supply and demand zones. We need to have some kind of entry confirmation because there are a lot of times where the markets will just smash straight through supply and demand zones. Take a look at this example over here. We had a beautiful supply zone over here 
Now, if you went and traded this, price would have just gone straight through your stop loss. That is why we can't just trade supply and demand zones. Secondly, I wanna show you a very interesting schematic of how the banks, big whales of the markets, form a distribution and accumulation strategy to kick out buyers and sellers like you and me in the markets at the same time to collect millions and billions of dollars of losses because ultimately the banks are there to get rich and make money off of these markets. They are there to manipulate us with our little small accounts and finish our accounts. That being called the method of Wyckoff, which I'm really gonna simplify and make easy for you. It may look complicated, but this is actually not that difficult. In a nutshell, and here's a good example over here. Let's say currently we are in a bearish market. You can see we're forming much lower lows and very lower highs. We then come to some kind of support or resistance or a demand zone or whatever point of interest you have. You will then have a point called your selling climax, which is where the market starts to form from bearish to more of an accumulation phase, which goes from bearish to plateau, forming a couple of higher highs and higher lows. We then have what you call an S&T in phase B, which is a, another sudden drop in the market, which which from the SC, buyers are starting to take power into the market. Your SNT in phase B, which is a liquidity grab to kick out all of these buyers. We will then have what you call a sign of strength, which is another big move up, kicking out all of these sellers because you are taught to sell or buy at the break of a resistance or a support. And then you'll have another move called a spring, which is another sharp move down that kicks out all of those buyers. So this is a schematic the banks use to kick out buyers and sellers at the same time. If we come over to the live chart, let me give you a good example over here. Here, where we tapped into this demand zone back from 2020 was a perfect schematic of Wyckoff. Let me just highlight this zone. Now within this zone, if we come over to a lower time frame, let's in this case, take the 10 minute time frame. The schematic over here is what you call Wyckoff, where the banks purposely kicked out sellers and buyers at the same time. In a nutshell, if I had to draw this out with a pen tool, Wyckoff is bearish movement, some kind of accumulation, a big move down, clearing this liquidity, a big move up, clearing this liquidity, and a retap into these demand zones to continue its big move up, which is exactly the schematic we've had over here. If I go and label this for you, we had over here our last point of supplies, point of supply, because at this area, you can see we were extremely bearish. Market is now starting to accumulate as we get closer to a demand zone, enticing people to buy. There are millions of people around the world buying at this point over here, forming some kind of strong resistance. And then what do the banks do? They will form their SNT in phase B, breaking all of these lows, collecting all of this liquidity, tapping into our demand zone, and then another big move up, clearing these highs, enticing people to buy. Our third move called our spring, which again kicks out all of these buyers. So over here, we've now got our spring, which then people are now starting to sell off. And then what happens again? The banks will move the market, clearing all of these highs over here, collecting all of these sellers' liquidity, kicking them out of the markets, which leaves unmitigated demand zones over here. Understanding how Wyckoff works and how the banks move the markets, the market has to come and tap into these unmitigated demand zones on the spring to continue its big move up. So this over here was an excellent position for a buy position, which we could have taken price to the next unmitigated supply zone, which we tapped into a couple of hours later. The exact same kind of schematic happens with supply zones, where we are currently in a bullish market. We have some accumulation, a big move up, clearing out sellers, a big move down, our sign of weakness, taking out those buyers, another big move up called your UTAD, taking out these sellers, and then finally a test on that UTAB, forming the big move down, turning the market from bullish to bearish, which usually occurs at some kind of support or resistance, at some kind of trend line, or at some kind of supply zone, which in your case could be any kind of point of interest. Wyckoff is just there as an entry confirmation. You cannot just trade Wyckoff as Wyckoff is fractal. It can happen on any markets at any time frame. Take a look at the schematic over here. It was also perfect Wyckoff. We had some accumulation, bearishness, accumulation, 
some kind of resistance forming, trapping out retail traders, a big move down, kicking them out, a big move up, clearing all these highs, a tap into unmitigated demand zones, forming bullishness, but then it just completely breaks it. Because understanding over here, you cannot just trade Wyckoff, we are at no area of interest. My area of interest was further down below over here. But let's go and take a look at the schematic of supply zones and Wyckoff in supply zones. Here we have the last up move before a big down move that broke all of the structure collecting all of this liquidity. So that forms a valid supply zone, which we can look for short positions. As you can see, price came back, tapping into the supply zone, dropping harder off. But over here, within the schematic over here, there is Wyckoff that played out, which formed our entry criteria. Currently, I'm on the daily chart, and I come over to my area of interest that I just highlighted. Take a look at this. We have extreme bullishness, some accumulation forming, a big move up, clearing out all of these sellers, a big move down, clearing out all of these buyers, a tap into the UTAD, which is an unmitigated supply zone to continue its big move down. So your entry confirmation could have looked like this, stop loss above that high, and you could have taken your take profits all the way down below, expecting to break these lows over here, understanding the bearishness of this market. So even on an extremely bearish market that is currently crashing, you can look for these areas of interest to look for short positions to catch massive profits. This move over here was well over 11,000 pips. Same thing with long positions. Over here, price probably tapped into some kind of demand zone, forming a big move up, which you could have looked for long positions. These rules on how these markets move is exactly there to manipulate you and make money off of you. Now, once you understand how the market really moves, you can make a lot of money off of this. So what I'm going to do is to help you out even more with a very detailed video in Wyckoff, taking live trades based on supply and demand zones and Wyckoff and overall institutional structure. I made about two weeks ago, a excellent 35 minute webinar on YouTube, completely free for anybody to watch. Again, there's no courses being sold there. It's all free value on YouTube. I make my money on the markets. I don't need to sell courses. So that link I'll leave on the screen somewhere over here for you to go and watch completely for free. I really recommend that if you want to learn how these crypto markets move, how you can go and make money off of that, perhaps recover any losses that you've invested into these crypto markets and get back on track. So what I recommend is click on this video over here and I'll see you over there.